Hi, I'm Kate Watson Smythe. Welcome to my space. So, this is the sitting room. So, I live here with my husband Adam and my two sons, Isaac and Noah, who are 16 and 14. And we moved in in December 2010, just before Christmas. It was two rental flats, and we lived on the top two floors uh, for about six to nine months while we converted down here and reconverted it back into a single dwelling and opened up the staircase and built this bit. And I work from home, so I'm in it all the time. <laughs> I'm always here, I never leave. <laughs> well, th this isn't really mine. This is a uh, Tracy Emin picture, and my husband was deputy editor of The Independent for many years, and Tracy used to write a column for him, and she gave him that as a present. She also gave him uh, a picture of Kate Moss, which my husband thought would be fabulous to hang in our bedroom at the end of our bed. So every morning I wake up to a picture of Kate Moss, which isn't at all stressful. We thought very carefully about how we use the space and we neither of us tend to go in there till after nine o'clock at night because there's feeding kids and there's homework and there's work and other things going on. So we painted it dark because it is a room that's used mostly in electric light um, and that particular shade of grey worked downpipe by Farrow and Ball works very well in electric light. And so it's cosy, it hides the telly as well. Painting a room dark makes the television disappear so you don't necessarily see it when it's not on. So I found this in a local junk shop and gave it to my husband for his 40th birthday. Um, we both went and chose, it wasn't just me buying it for me, well, totally. And, uh, but it's been completely taken over by Enid. Obviously she's not sitting on it today because why would she oblige? And she's absolutely mullered it. My mother was divorced and she bought her first house and she said, oh, I've seen a dresser I'm going to buy. Um, I'm going to save up for it. And I worked out that if I save up for it, I'll be able to buy it by the summer. And she came home from work the next day and said she'd bought it. So now this is the library, which sounds terrible. Room full of books. Um, normally I sit here, but clearly someone has decided now this is her chair. So um, that will probably need reupholstering in about six months. I never threw any of them away. and then. Ad would have them arranged, and I really like the fact that there's intellectual law books from his degree next to all my Jilly Coopers. I like, I like the discovery, but it's an absolute nightmare because you can't find anything because there's no rhyme or reason to it. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the kitchen. We, yes, we do spend loads of time in the kitchen. I have uh, a desk upstairs, but I spend quite a lot of time working at the kitchen table. I do think the kitchen is the heart of the home, but more than that, actually, I think it's the table you sit at, because that then is about the food, and it's about sitting with people, and it's family meetings, and planning things, and eating. That chair came from, I'm sure he wouldn't call it a junk shop, but a, a sort of vintage furniture shop. Uh, and I think it's one of the old barber's chairs from Claridge's, which they got rid of when they were revamping it. So this is the most recent addition, is we've just converted this cupboard from the cupboard of junk into the larder. We've put a sliding door on here and put some old, really old-fashioned textured glass for it. My favourite part of the house tends to be the room I most recently decorated. So this week it's my larder, which I've just constructed in the washing machine room. Uh, but if you'd come last week, it would have been my bathroom as the most recent I've redecorated. So it does change all the time. So you can have a little look in the downstairs loo, which is covered in chalkboard paint and ends up with lots of rude messages all over it quite often. I don't think it's too bad. There may have been some censoring before you came. <laughs> okay, and now we'll go and look upstairs. So this is the secret door to my son's bedroom, and we can't go in there because it will be a terrible mess, but it was wallpapered all over to hide it. My other son's bedroom, we can't go in there either because he's 16 and it's very private. And this is the spare room, and we can come in here. This is the spare room, uh, but it's also where my son plays his Xbox. And sometimes if he has friends around, they watch telly in here. So it's become the sort of teenage hangout room. 
My decorating style, I would call it, I sometimes call it urban glamour because it is quite urban, but I do like shiny things. Don't like too much colour. I'm quite monochrome, but I'm also quite maximalist. I'm a monochrome maximalist, maybe. <laughs> I like, obviously, lots of shades of grey, but I like lots of vintage wood, natural materials, bits of pink, lots of metallics. So going on up the stairs past, there's a place we go on holiday every single year and we take a picture of them. So see them growing through the years. Um, going up here to my bedroom. Avert your eyes if you're offended by swearing. So this is the other present that Tracy gave my husband for editing his copy. It is a picture of Kate Moss, only clearly it's not Kate, it's Tracy, but I have to wake up and look at modelling, supermodelling perfection every morning. I only put these here for you. I was just trying to make it look posh for the shoot. This, there was a bird that used to live in the tree outside the window. Uh, I think it was a starling and they mimic sounds and it used to wake me up at four o'clock every morning, uh, beeping as if the alarm was just about to go off. And then I found this picture and it was absolutely perfect. Come round to my, this isn't a walk-in wardrobe, this is a walk-through wardrobe, which we built. So we built this with a false wall, so to put the bend in front, and then all the storage space is here, um, and it has lights in it too. So, and then a door, which is supposedly to make it look a bit like a boudoir, but basically is all the stuff I can't be bothered to hang up. And then come through into the bathroom, which was a bedroom. So we made that a door. The beautiful bath, which is very beautiful and sort of useless. It's a slightly short one. Most baths, I think, are 1,700 long. This is 1,500. For some reason, we had a pop-up plug put in, which we thought would be a really good idea. And it's a terrible idea, because as soon as you get in the bath, because it's a small bath, you sit on the plug and the plug pops up and all the water disappears. So we had as big a shower as we could fit. I think a big shower is as luxurious, actually, as a bath. Where do I find my inspiration? Uh, well, like everyone, I'm, I, or because of my job, I'm online a lot, so I see a lot. Um, I think it's very important to have something vintage in every room, so I do steal things from my mother's house um, when she's not looking, sometimes when she is looking. And, uh, I like, I think it's very important to look at hotels. I think hotel design is very clever because they have to get a lot into a small space. So they have to be clever with storage, they have to be clever with bathrooms and carving out spaces from bigger rooms to make smaller rooms. That's always a good way to look. And uh, restaurant loose, always good. Small, quite often quite dramatic design, great wallpaper or interesting tile arrangements. So that's always a good place to look. I always take my phone to the loo. People were suspicious, and then it turns up on Instagram. <laughs> we needed mirrors to bounce light around, which obviously you need in a dark room, but I think when you have a really big, expansive mirror, it can look a bit like a gym. So I found these foxed mirror tiles, and you can obviously have one single slab, uh, but we just had lots of tiles stuck on there, which is a slightly softer reflection first thing in the morning as well. So that's the bathroom, so now we'll go and look at the final room, which is the loft. We wanted to do the loft because we'd taken out a bedroom to make it into our ensuite bathroom. So, and against all the advice, you never get rid of a bedroom. So we felt that it would be good to put it back and have it as a spare room. Um, and I wanted it to have that feel that as if it had always been there and we just sort of rediscovered it and, and painted it dusted it a bit. So we kept the, the beams are visible for that reason and uh, I wanted it to have those old small windows in it. And we wanted to keep it open and the floorboards would be painted white, same as the rest of the house, to very much keep that continuity, again to make it look like it had always been there. Um, and once we'd done the windows it became, seemed very obvious that we would just have a long desk running under the windows. So that was a piece of old school worktop which just fitted in there so that we could both sit there and work or stare out of the window. 